so glad to, to have such a great fellowship together. This is kind of like a, uh, a potluck or something. You know, our church, we've, we've been here in Chiang Mai about 11 years, and the international flavor, the, the diversity, the people that are here um, just make this such a beautiful fellowship. And I so appreciate Chip and so many of the elders, the leaders of the church and the fellowship that um, just have continued to lead in Pastor Jeff and uh, Julie's uh, absence and their willingness and their joy to do that. And I'm going to pick up my bookmark here. And uh, so it's kind of like that when Pastor Jeff asked if I would consider preaching. It was one of those, um, well, I'm really a PE teacher. Um, I am the administrator, a, a head of school at Grace International School. Um, I, I find it curious as to how God, there we go, Chip. I'm doing the I'm doing the little disco dance up here too. This is awesome. Uh, I find it I find it amazing how God has uh, chosen me, uh, allowed me to step into the role of leadership and to be doing things differently than maybe I'm uh, comfortable with. And so, speaking to you, uh, the fellowship of believers that we are. Um, again, I love to just have some hula hoops and and let's uh, do some jumping jacks and. Oh, and if you do get sleepy and you need to stand up in the back, you can, you can do that just, um, you know, as we kind of, a, I, I think as a teacher, and so let me just warn you, I do have to be careful not to rabbit trail, and uh, my wife is not here to text me in the middle of the message to tell me to get back to the point. So hopefully I'll actually come back to the um, message and service there, but sometimes I do get off. So I'm trying to remember all these things, clicker going. Let's see. There we go. All right. Uh, so I do have a message pre uh, prepared. And I did give this some thought, and I have been praying about it. I do love God's sense of humor because um, I, I, I did not even consider this was Mother's Day at first when I was preparing uh, the message. And so, uh, Chip, thank you, and the church, thank you for again, honoring our mothers and uh, those of you who um, have the joy and the blessing of being a, a mother and what God has done to design you um, in life to be a reflection of, of Christ himself and the body of the church and, and how um, that demonstration of sacrificial love that you give. Um, I do think, again, my wife is back in the U.S. She is uh, mother of our six children, and we have our first two grandbabies coming, so that's one of the reasons why she went back. First one's due at the end of this month, and the next one in, in uh, June. So uh, excited to be able to go back and to do that. But um, So just being obedient to God's prompting to say, I'm willing to come and stand here to share with you what I believe God has laid on my heart I hope that you will um, find in scriptures as you look along and as we dive into the message that I do believe God has laid on my heart to share this morning, um, that you will find, um, find the food, the nourishment from his word. And as the Holy Spirit is present, that as we journey together, you will use God's word and this time together to grow and be uh, enriched by what he has to say for us today. So let me begin in a word of prayer, and uh, we'll dive into God's word today. Heavenly Father, thank you for the message that you've already proclaimed through song, through prayer, through testimony. Lord, as we as the church, as we as your believers have come together, Father, yes, may your Holy Spirit be working in each of our hearts right now. That, Heavenly Father, we would open our minds and our hearts to be in tune and attentive uh, to your message and to your word. And so, Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, may the presentation today be a message from you. This I ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are kind of getting down to, at least at, at schools, universities, uh, the end of a season for for graduates and some people uh, leaving. Uh, I, I love the time of year as we do celebrate uh, the, the seniors and graduates, and, but it also does bring a lot of transition. Uh, we rejoice with, with Mitch and his getting a job, but we, look, we don't look forward to your family leaving. 
um, others in their church and our community, it's, it's like that. It's just this life goes on and there's different chapters and things that happen. So I want to relate with you a little bit as though I were wanting to tell my own children or, or seniors or people around me uh, things that maybe God has taught me or, or learned that hopefully will be life application for you as well. So there's a few. Um, yeah, I got to keep up here. Oh, yeah, this the outline imitating God's love and um, avoiding evil and then walking in the light. So I, um, I hope you can follow along. And again, maybe it all makes sense towards the end as we kind of come back together. And maybe I won't go into too many different rabbit trails, but this is what the Lord has led on my heart. So Paul, the offer of Ephesians starts with a statement encouraging the church and its followers to be imitators of God. And he tells us that um, in uh, Ephesians chapter 5, you can find your own uh, passage of scripture there on your, in your Bible, your device. Now, I'm, I'm reading from the Holman Christian Standard uh, study, study Bible, so it might look different than the NIV or the ESV or um, another translation that you have. Uh, they're all very rich and good. But um, let, me, let me begin in Ephesians 5, beginning in verses 1 and 2. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly beloved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. So to be the imitator um, of, of God is this, of Christ is this sacrificial love. And he, and he looks and he, the demonstration of God's love, he loved us in such a way that we don't deserve to know the love that he has for us. Um, Romans 5, 8 tells us, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners or while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Now, as a young boy at age, um, age around 12, I was sitting in church, and um, the, it was an Easter time, and they were singing the old rugged cross. And I remember in my, so vividly the image of Christ outstretched arms on that cross, and he died on that cross for me and my sins. And that became very real. And the prompting in my heart as the Holy Spirit began knocking on the door of my heart, I responded. Even though my parents were missionaries, uh, I grew up as an MK. I've been in church all my life. I had, I had kind of been around it. I came to that personal place in my life where I realized I was a sinner. I was lost. It wasn't just the religion that was going to save us or save me. But I needed a relationship with the Heavenly Father. So I began this journey of, of growing in my walk with the Lord. And that's what, kind of what I want to take us through or, or walk through as we have these scriptures. Romans 5, 5, it says, And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Again, it's that Holy Spirit that began to work in me. I remember on that Easter, I, I put out these little three crosses in front of our, our house. And, and my siblings, you know, they kind of, they were kind of embarrassed. They were kind of like, Steve, don't do that, you know, kind of thing. But, but I felt so in love with my Savior that I wanted to give a, an expression of what he had done for me. I began telling my friends about the change and the transformation in my life. Because I believe the Holy Spirit was working in me at this young age. The scripture goes on in Colossians 3.12. It says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves in compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And this, this uh, scripture began to become alive to me. I began to, to hear and see and read God's word and these things and, and how to use its teachings as a bit of a roadmap for my life. When it tells you, you, you know, be compassionate, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Um, I, I remember one time an expression of this that um, I was surprised at my own response, um, but... but um, we were, you know, at lunch, um, I, I was an MK at, at school, and um, we brown bag, everybody brought their own lunch, you know, and stuff, and, 
Anyway, we were, we were there. We were just joking or whatever. And, this, and my friend came and he took this egg and he cracked it on my head. And so I had egg on my, on my head and my face. And it's kind of, I mean, we're in school. Like, this is lunchtime. I don't exactly have another change of clothes. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm angry. I'm like, what are you doing? And I, and I tried to remember. And somehow, between, for the Holy Spirit prompting, I didn't act and lash out and respond and, and you know, try to deck him, or, you know, chase him around or anything. But, but we're still friends. And we, we continued through that. And I got cleaned up and, and went through the day. But, but I know this was a change in my lifestyle because... There, there was a time when I, I did, I, you know, um, I, there was a season I was in the public school in, in the U.S., and it looked very different than the private Christian school I went to um, later. And, and there were often fights at the school in just the way the setting was. It was just that response. If you got, if you got challenged, if you got, you know, called a coward or a chicken or just, I mean, anything could kind of spring it off. And so, and so my life and my character begin to change and develop into becoming hopefully more like Christ, imitating more of what, what God's character, Christ's character would be. Let's go on in 2 Thessalonians 3, 5. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. 1 John 4, 7. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. We must let each, um, each of us come to a clear understanding of Christ's sacrificial love, putting aside our own self-interests and desires and learning to love in kindness and justice and gentleness. These characteristics had become, begin to manifest itself and coming out in my life and in growing up and begin to surround myself with others who were helping me to grow in that. Um, as I think back, let me make sure I'm with my slides here. Yes. I, again, as I think back at this young life growing up, again, where I had grown up in a, in a Christian home, a Christian environment, um, we knew right from wrong. We, we knew what to do. But I'm also so grateful that I grew up with a father who, um, who gave me the image of Christ, of a Christ-like walk. And his relationship with the Heavenly Father was real and vibrant. And then my mother as well. She was a tremendous, is a tremendous prayer warrior. Throughout my life and journey, I knew that there were two people I could call on to pray for me, and I knew they had a direct line to God, my mother-in-law and my mother. My mother-in-law, I think she was a saint. Now, she passed away a few years ago, but she literally was like had revelations from the Lord and could, and could tell when things were happening, happening. Now, part of it now as I've grown a little older, I understand life, wisdom, experience, she... She probably knew. So, for example, um, uh, I had proposed to their daughter, my wife, Judy, um, around Christmas time. And we were going to their house for a visit. And they were not home. And we were going to share with them in person this good news that I had proposed. And Judy was wearing the engagement ring and all. But we, we got to the house first. We were sitting there on the couch. Uh, my mother-in-law, father-in-law come walking in. And my mother-in-law goes straight to Judy and let me see your finger, looks at that. We hadn't said anything or known anything. And I was like, she just has a direct line to God. He is telling her exactly. Now, I, and, and I believe it's true in that in a sense that we do have that direct line to God. And we can know and hear from him. But I'm so grateful that I grew up in a home and a household. And the influence of others in my life that taught me how to imitate God. Well, the next part of the journey was this next step of um, avoiding evil. You know, stuff kind of happens, and, and you go along, and we hit seasons of our life up and down, maybe things that are, um, are challenging for us, but there's also surroundings. Um, you know, when I think about here in Thailand, um, and people cautioned, you, you know, in a sense about, about being here, in a sense, we, 
we think about our, I, I, I did, I think, here we have uh, all the temples, the spirit houses, the different things that, that people are praying to a spirit world to, to bring up these spirits. And, they, and they, they, they pray to them, they believe in them, they, they ask for things. But we serve a God who is over all the spirits. And they tremble and they bow before him. But as life goes on, kids, sometimes we face, we find things in, in our lives. And, and um, so we have, to, we have to be careful how we live. So someone who desires to live a holy life, in, in Genesis 4, 7, God said to Cain, when Cain had built up so much anger for Abel, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. I mean, this is right after, you know, I mean, the creation story, the first children, and sin is already crouching at the door of Cain's heart. And we have to realize that, that even in these early beginnings of mankind, we can see how, how sin can so transform a behavior. I'm so sorry about hearing about your... your brother that uh, was the individual that was shot I, I don't know the circumstances but it, coming from my home country often this is in the news and the senselessness the, the, whether it's road rage or the shootings at, at the administrator of the school I think about the safety and well-being of all the students have we made it safe have we guarded against the evils that are there are we doing what we can to be active to keep our children, your children safe, and our staff. So we, we have to rule over it and uh, the, the fear that we have, and it cannot rule us. In Psalms 1, 1, it says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the company of mockers. Uh, in my wife and I's first term, um, we were overseas in the southern part of the Philippines, and we were doing language school and we were in a little village and there was this little uh, Nipa hut or Sala out back and, and we had a young journey girl that was teaching our children while we were in language school. And this was a verse that my, my children were learning from her that blessed is the one who does not walk in the step of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or take seat in the company of mockers. Avoid evil. In Job, it says that uh, God called together all the, all the heavenly beings, remember? And, and he says to Satan, the devil, and he says, Have you seen my servant Job? And here's what God says about Job. He said, He fears God and shuns evil. <laughs> this is God's prescription, Right? How to live a successful life in the evil, sinful world that we have. We have a healthy, reverent, loving fear of God. And his wrath and his just, justness and judgment. But he loves us so much as well. But it, the second part of this is he, he shunned evil. And in today, as I, as I try to train my own children, as I try to speak, to the lives of the students that are around us, the influences, the social media, the different messages that they're being taught, being spoken into. If Sunday school on, on one day a week is the only message of God's word and love kids are getting, they are in trouble. When you look statistically at the hours and hours that, that are spent on on facebook platforms or whatever i'm i'm an older generation facebook's probably me it's, it's instagram it's it's TikTok. it's something else i don't i don't even have an account for it, i don't know but but others are speaking into this is how you should respond this is how you behave this is how your character should be this is what your life is and parents aunts and uncles grandparents brothers and sisters in christ we're to look out for one another, shepherd one another. Kids, adults, avoid, flee from that evil. 
and fear God. I love that passage. And then in Psalms 119, 11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Um, when I was in ninth grade, it felt like passages of scripture began to just jump off the page as we were taking time in my bible class to go through proverbs and the book of proverbs and all of these teachings and things that were coming and it was it was like as the deer pants for water so my soul thirsts for you and as so as a young person in that ninth grade i remember how how these passages these scriptures and and i began memorizing I memorized uh, Romans chapter 12, and I began to memorize other passages of Scripture and things so that when stuff began to happen in my life, I literally remember recalling God's Word coming up. I'll never forget. I'm going to lose it. I know. I did bring a handkerchief because I, I am a crier when I get up here and start preaching and all. So in, in the southern Philippines, while, while we were there, um, was the the terrorist group the Abu Sayyaf uh, they did carry out a terrorist attack at an at the Davao airport and uh, one of my co-workers a, a brother in Christ um, was killed in that bomb blast um, on that day um, um, a friend of ours and his wife and two kids were coming off the airplane and I was supposed to be the one to go pick them up and I was talking to um, a co-worker and he said, hey, I, I'm, I'm a neighbor with them. I, I can get keys to their car. I'll just go pick them up. You don't have to go. I said, sounds, okay, that sounds fine. So I'm just going to go pick them up at the airport. And uh, Bill, Bill was killed. Lying standing where I would have stood had I been the one. I got a phone call. There's been a blast at the airport. Can you get down here? Um, I went straight away. And um, we found Bill. He was, he, was a, he was a mess. Still grasping for his life. And I had to share the news with his wife at the hospital later. This is not part of the script. This is part of the message. I told you I get on these rabbit trails sometimes. But his wife, Lynn, had been preparing for a women's uh, retreat. She had been bathing herself in God's word. And when this horrible event happened, she was quoting scripture giving thanks to God. It was amazing to see, but because God's word, living and active, was already at work in her heart. It was a lesson. Each of us, please put God's word in your heart and in your lives. It will be the thing that sustains you. Proverbs uh, 1.10, my son, if sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. Powerful words. Proverbs 23.17, do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. Romans 6.12, Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Hebrews 4, 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Can you fathom this? Can you, can you believe and understand? I, I, I so can't really picture the temptation of Christ as he was without food and water in the wilderness and, and Satan came to tempt him. But again, when you look at what Christ's response was, it was God's word, wasn't it? 
God's word is what Jesus used to rebuke Satan and his evil snares and his temptations. Folks, we've got to cling to God's word. I tell students all the time, a different person could come up and speak and give a different message. And, and um, when I was in early in ministry, I um, took a backpack of Bibles with me um, onto the college campuses. I did student evangelism, college campus ministry, and I, um, the Gideons had donated a bunch of these little um, New Testaments, and in it was the, the, the road of salvation that's in the back of the, the Bible, and you can follow along, and I had the Roman road, and I had the four spiritual laws, and I had these little Bibles, and I, I would go, and I would just hand out these Bibles because I believed that God's Word could say more into the lives of these kids than, than anything I would say. Because the next time, there might be somebody coming and bringing a different message. And time and time again, when I, when I had students that would come to the Bible study, many of them never had, had their own copy of God's Word, had not read it. They had assumed things, or they would hear things different. And I'll never forget these two Muslim uh, girls they were like, I, I, I see in God's word, it says this, and I'm, I must give my heart to Christ. But if I do, I fear for my family, they will be killed. What do I do with that inner struggle? Do I obey God's word and accept Christ? Or, or does it mean death for my family. Can you imagine that type of struggle that goes on in people's lives and hearts in our world today and the countries that are around us? Oh, thank you for the kingdom of Thailand that we can so openly and freely express God's message and love and word. We do pray for the, the country today and the leadership as, as God or orchestrates leaders in countries. It's not escaping his control. Thank you, God, for that. Again, a lot of this is not even in the script here. 1 John 5, 18. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who is born of God keeps them safe, and the evil one cannot harm them. We hear the promises of God if we will choose righteousness, we will be able to remain in fellowship and unity with God. Okay, I'm doing pretty good. We might actually get out early. I was told a good sermon is a short one, so who knows? Ephesians 5, uh, 8 through 17. Believers who walk in the light. So we have imitate God. We have avoid evil. And now we have this journey or this life of, of walking in fellowship. Walking in the light. Again, th this is a message that God laid on my heart to share with you. As you open your hearts and minds. As you open God's word. As the Holy Spirit is present. Perhaps these are some things that will help you in your journey. Someone who can see the truth. Live as children of the light. Verse 8 says, positioning yourself to be living and doing life where there are clear paths and directions and circumstances. I want to stop here and I'm actually going to now read the passage that Ephesians 5, all of this together as we then get into this last little bit. So for, uh, beginning, follow me at the top. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering, a sacrifice to God. But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or greed that these improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenities, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which is out of place, but rather thanksgiving, uh, but in thanksgiving. For this, you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such as man, an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are not obedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. 
verse 8. For you were once in darkness, but now you are in the light of the Lord. Live as children of the light. For the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what is disobedient and in secret. But everything exposed to the light becomes visible, for it is light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine in you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Um, as I go on here, Psalms fifty six thirteen. Yeah. Just checking, make sure. For you have uh, delivered me from death and from my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. So, a little fun story, I was reflecting, and as I was praying through this, um, I was, I was a young boy, I don't know, probably eight, nine, ten, somewhere around in there. And I was at a camp, and mom and dad were in sessions, and some of us kids were out playing. And these two uh, two boys that were a little older, I didn't, I didn't, never met them, knew them or anything. And and um, oh, they started telling me stories about this monster, right? That's in the woods, and um, it was around there, and it was, you know, it was scary. It was frightening. And I was just a little kid, and they were a little older. They were gonna take care of me, and oh, I heard it. And it's this noise, and they would go run around and hear all this, ah, and sticks and stuff. And I was just frightened. I was scared. And, 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 and then they, you know, uh, they would come back, and they go, we fought him off. Uh, he's close by, but uh, don't go around and be careful. And, I, you know, I was just like, wow, trembling. And, and then they, oh, I hear it again. They ran around, and, 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 and I peeked around. I went around this building. I peeked around. And it was just the two of them with some sticks smacking at each other, you know, and making fun. And they had deceived me. They had lied to me. They had tricked me. And I, I was like, I'm, this is just not right. And so as a young boy, you know, around that age, I, I began to learn sometimes you can't trust everybody, right? You, you, you have to look out for um, the deceptions and the ways and the people that are, that are out there. So we have to be careful how we live. And this reminded me, this story about how walking in light as this was the dark woods and and you know you're kind of long there's a there's a um i think i'm supposed to tell this part later so i'll, I'll wait till i get there um again i'm trying to stay on track i really am and john isaiah here we go i think i'm gonna slide away yes caught up um uh, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light, Isaiah 9, 2. Uh, those living in the land deep in darkness and light has dawned. In Isaiah 50, 10, who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant? Let the one who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord, and rely on their God. When I think about the children of Israel and how they were um, wandering in the wilderness, and even later, once they had occupied the land, and then the king of Babylon comes in uh, and, and begins to take over in the books of Isaiah and Jeremiah, how they were walking in darkness. They, the scripture says they had prostituted themselves over to the people around them, and God's wrath was upon them. If they would just listen and get back to God and walk with him, he wanted to bless them. And in John 8, 12, it says, When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Um, I, again, this is where I often think about Peter and his stepping out of the boat and his keeping his gaze fixed on God, fixed on Christ, that he was able to do miraculous things walking on the water. And I can totally re relate to times in my life when I have perhaps taken my eyes off the Heavenly Father and I've gotten off the path or I've strayed. In John eleven nine, 9, Jesus answered, Jesus answered, uh, Are there not 12 hours in the daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime would not stumble, for they see the 
see by the world's light. In 1 John 1, 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus. His son purifies us from all sin. His son purifies us from all sin. Remember my going back to my testimony in my life? I came back to that understanding of knowing that I needed Jesus Christ in my own heart, my own life. Knowing that God loves us and has redeemed us, and if we're willing to walk in the light and stay on the right path and keep our eyes fixed on Christ. Um, it, it, kind of just another little illustration. Um, if you remember in um, uh, The Hobbit, the story, and Bilbo, they're, they're in this deep, dark forest, right? And they're wandering around. Maybe they're lost, and, and their m mind is tra playing tricks on them. Uh, Bilbo has to, has to climb this tree, go up to the top, and he breaks out into the light. And he takes this breath, and he looks around, and there are these butterflies. And he's looking for the sunset. He's looking for the right direction. He's trying to keep his eyes on the sun. And, of course, uh, Tolkien and illustration and the different things. The uh, Lord of the Rings and things that come to so many different references or illustrations about our journey with God. That sometimes we have to get above some things. Climb out of that muck and mire and the depression of those things that are there. And look to the light and keep our eyes focused on him. Yep. In closing... As we live our lives in a way that strives to emulate God's character of love, we can find ourselves truly loving God and loving others. It be can become a habit and a lifestyle for us that has come natural for us to live in such a way that our light can shine before God. When we recognize the sins and deceitful traps that are around us, we come in tune to the area of life of those are around us that are not pleasing to the Lord and are contradictory to what God's word and plan and desire is for us. When we live our lives in goodness, righteousness, and truth, we're able to walk in God's light and understand what God's will is for us. Ultimately, we're to live a life in such a way that points others to Christ. Remember I talked about my father and my mother and and those that were imitators of God, imitators of Christ in their life. Uh, there were a lot of struggles uh, growing up as a, as a missionary kid. I didn't really understand or know all the different struggles that actually went into being a missionary. When I finally went to be a missionary myself, I told people around, that it was a lot more fun being the MK than it is being a missionary. Because, you, you know, we're just there to play. A mission meeting was all this fun and all this stuff. And and meanwhile, the leaders are all getting together and having to make some critical uh, decisions. And the critical decisions were who gets to hear the gospel? Who do we invest? Where do we send? Who do we, who do we have the resources and the people to tell? But the other part of that is as the body of believers and as we as this church have that opportunity, to no matter where we are, whatever circumstance or age or stage of life we have, we can be that light to those around us. We can respond in a way of love and kindness and gentleness. We can change and, and not surround ourselves with the people who are going to draw us down. I do believe that in, in, our, in our kids' lives and journeys, um, who they surround themselves will make a huge difference and impact. I always try to help our children understand if you'll choose people that will help you to become a better person and don't, and don't uh, um, spend your time uh, with the people or in, in the influence of people who are going to bring you down, that you can rise above. But we continue to be the light of the world. God's word continues still in us, the Holy Spirit's presence, the prompting, our ability to keep our eyes focused on God. All of these are little steps in the journey that help us walk in the light and walk as a believer. So in closing today, um, I am, I'd like to give you a, a question to reflect on. 
Are you willing to examine your own life and ask God if there are areas in your life uh, that you are not acting in the character of God's word? Let that sink in. Are, are there any areas in your life, any areas of integrity, visual things with your eyes, anger, bitterness in your heart, resentment, any of those types of areas you need to give over? Are you stumbling into sin time and time again? We have a loving God and Savior who wants to rescue you. Are you willing to avoid these pitfalls by staying rooted in God's Word, to remain connected to the vine and in fellowship with Christ and to walk in a manner that glorifies God? As we do come to the close, I do hope that as the church, we have an amazing group of elders in this church. I know Pastor Jeff isn't here, myself, Chip, others that, that are willing. If you'd like to pray, if you'd like to come forward, maybe make a decision. The same way when I was uh, sitting in the service and, and I heard God's word clearly on my heart that I needed to surrender and ask Christ into my life. That if that's the message for you today, we're available uh, to talk to you. Um, take us by by the arm and we would love to pray with you and talk with you our worship team is going to come now and and lead us in our closing uh time and then i'll close with a benediction but um this is a message that god laid on my heart and i hope it's been able to bless you and that you've been able to discern and see the steps that god has for us be imitators of god avoid evil and walk in the light Allow God's word to instill in you the, the love of God that we can respond in a loving way to others. So thank you, worship team. As you come and lead, I'm going to come down to the front here. If you would like to respond, just a good old invitation, you're welcome to come down. Um, and then at the end, I'll close this in a benediction.